Hi everyone, Animal Girl here, back with another edition of TV Talk. It's Tuesday, and that means it's Star Wars Day. And this week's episode of The Clone Wars was... The Citadel. When a Jedi Master is captured after obtaining the coordinates to a very important hyperspace lane that runs through both Separatist and Republic space, Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Captain Rex, Commander Cody, and an elite but small group of clones are sent to rescue him from a very dangerous Separatist prison known as the Citadel. However, they are not alone as Ahsoka tags along, and the young Padawan may be able to prove her worth when they learn that the Citadel is not quite c compatible with the information they have on it. Okay, things I liked about this episode. First off, we see actual carbon freezing in this episode. Now, I know what you're saying. We saw carbon freezing in The Empire Strikes Back. And yes, we did. But we didn't actually see the carbon freezing process in The Empire Strikes Back. We just see Han or Harrison Ford lowered down into the carbon chamber and then we see a lot of smoke, which I presume was dry ice for the effect. And then these giant tongs come down and he's brought up in this carbon freezing tube thing. We don't actually see the process. In this episode, we actually get a downward view of the process. So we actually see the freezing. We don't actually see the Jedi and the clones being frozen, but we do see that it's that there's more going on in there than what we're led to believe in The Empire Strikes Back. Secondly, we actually see how protective Anakin is of Ahsoka at the beginning of this episode. Now, this is very, very important um, for what I'm going to say next. Um, and that is that the Citadel was not built by the Separatists. The Citadel was built probably during the Old Republic. And by Old Republic, I mean the ruling factions before this Republic. We know from the books and comics, I believe, and from other information, that there was another Republic prior to this one, um, possibly when the Sith were still alive. Now, whether or not that's canon, I'm not 100% sure, as a lot of the books and comics are not canon, unless the creators actually state, yes, in fact, they are canon. And there's really only two that I know of that are canon, um, aside from the ones that are based on the movies, and those two are A New Dawn and the Ahsoka novel. So all the other books are kind of, they're not canon. So a lot of the information in there is not in, important, but we can still say that until they're proven or disproven that, yes, we can fall back on that. Okay, but I'm getting a little off topic here. Now, the Citadel was not built by the Separatists. The Citadel was actually built by someone else, and I believe it was actually built by the Jedi Knights. And the reason why I say this is because the Citadel was designed to specifically hold a Jedi Knight or a Jedi Master or a Jedi Padawan if they were to lose their way. And that's what makes the Citadel very, very dangerous. Most other places, the Jedi would have no problem getting in and getting out because they would be able to use the Force to help them get through it. The Citadel is very different. And Anakin is very protective of Ahsoka going on this mission. He doesn't want her to go. She eventually does end up going, and she says that she talked it over with Master Plo and that she was assigned to the mission. Now, whether or not that's true, I don't know. 
We do know that Ahsoka does like to follow the rules to a degree. She will not disobey orders very often. I mean, she has. She's a teenager. She's going to do that. Uh, also, Anakin's her teacher. And Anakin does not follow the rules very well either. Um, Obi-Wan actually says in this episode when they discover that Ahsoka's there, um, he says, I see Anakin's, and they're fighting about it, um, he says, I see Anakin's new teaching philosophy is do as I say and not as I do, which I found kind of funny. Um, but again, we're seeing how protective he is of Ahsoka. Now, whether it is because he is basically in charge of keeping her safe until her trials, or because she is a teenager, she is 16 at this point, which is still relatively very young, or um, whether it's just because of the loss of his mother is still, you know, three, four years after the fact, still very... The sting is still there, and he almost did lose, he actually did lose her on Mortis, um, um, only to get her back, and I don't want to reveal too many spoilers in that in case you haven't seen that arc, which was the last one we talked about. Um, but he is extremely protective of her, and he's even more so now, and I think Mortis may have had something to do with that. But I could be wrong, it could, it could be Mortis, it could be the fact that he was unable to protect his own mother, and he just has this overwhelming fear of losing the people he's close to. It's hard to say, but we do see that he is extremely protective of her, more so than many of the other Jedi Knights with Padawans that we've seen at this point in time. Thirdly, I liked that we got a little Easter egg from Return of the Jedi. Now, I know people have seen Return of the Jedi. It, the original trilogy is a classic. There are not many people out there who haven't seen it. Um, and if you remember to the beginning of Return of the Jedi, Han Solo is frozen in carbonite and is basically hanging on the wall of Jabba's palace. Now, one of the clones, and I think it's Cody, in this episode basically says, I hope this works because I don't want to end up as a wall decoration. I thought if that wasn't intentional, it is a really cute throwback to Return of the Jedi, one of the original movies. And I absolutely love when Lucasfilm does that, when they take things from the original trilogy, which is 24 to 25 years. Um, 23 to 24 years prior, or 24 to 23 years from the point we're at, depending on where you are in the series. Right now it's 20, 24 to 25, um, but it could be anywhere from 28 to 29 years um, from where we are in the series. And they do a little Easter egg in there from that series. I absolutely love that. And they did that in this one with the wall decoration comment, um, which I thought was just so cute. And I absolutely loved it. It's not really a spoiler because um, it doesn't have anything to do with the actual episode in and of itself. I just like that they put it in there. It was a comment they didn't have to put in there, but they did. And people who have seen the original trilogy will get that comment. Lastly, I liked seeing the reprogrammed battle droids. We actually see three of them, and they are battle droids that were not destroyed in battle. They were actually captured to some degree. Um, possibly they shut down due to power loss and were just recovered by the clone, the um, Grand Army of the Republic, and they were reprogrammed to follow R2, and he refers to them as his soldiers. And I actually liked seeing that. It's like a, it's like seeing a soldier who was um, fighting and on one side of the war and then realized that not necessarily that their side was losing because I don't think either side is really losing or winning at this point in time. It's this really we know this store this war is basically just a sham war. It's basically designed to let Palpatine get more power, um, but. It's like one side seeing, um, soldiers on one side seeing that their side's not right. They're, um, they're not being, um, it's not what they thought it was. Their side's not fighting for what they thought it was and joining the other side. And I did like that. And what I also liked about it is that it's battle droids. Now, 
Granted, you needed to use the battle droid so they could get into the Citadel because it is in Separatist space and they couldn't have the clones um, disguise themselves as Separatist soldiers to come in and whatnot. It's the same reason why they had to use the carbon freezing to get in. Um, but still, I really, really liked that. Uh, also, on a side note, because this will have this will um, tie in with the question I'm going to ask later on. Um, we see Tarkin in this episode um, for the first time. Um, now, for those of you who saw the original trilogy, you know that Tarkin is the Grand Moff. I'm trying to think what his other title was, but I know for a fact from Rebels that he was a Grand Moff. Um, and don't ask me what a Grand Moff is, because I have no idea. I think it's a political title. Um, but anyways, he was the Grand Moff who, in A New Hope, was with Vader the majority of the time, and he was the Grand Moff of the Outer Rims, which means he was in charge of planets like Lethal and Tatooine. Um, now, at this point, we see him before all that because he is serving the Republic, and I, I'm not going to say... The reason why it's not on here is because it's not something I liked about the episode because I do not like Tarkin at all. But it's not something I hated about the episode either. Um, I just felt I should mention it because it does tie in with the question I'm going to ask later on in this video. Okay, things I didn't like about this episode. There really wasn't anything I didn't like about this episode. Now, keep in mind, this is an arc. There are two other episodes that are going to follow this episode. And so it does leave off on a note where you're like, well, wait, what? There's got to be more, and that's because there is more It's in two more episodes. It just leaves at, off at a point where you're going to want to come back later. Now, this episode to me is very, very important because it shows, A, where Tarkin, or Tarkin comes from, and, you know, his views, and it kind of introduces us to what he was like before the Empire, and kind of starts to build up that relationship he had with Anakin in the original in A New Hope. B, it shows how important Ahsoka is here because she will play a bigger role later in the arc. Uh, now, I'm not going to get too much into it because A, we don't cover it in this episode. B, it will be a spoiler for later, for the, um, one of the two later videos. So we're going to leave off on that until we get to that point in the video or in the arc. Okay, question of the week. And I told you me mentioning Tarkin was going to be very important or not important, but was going to tie into the question and I did not lie to you. The quest, my question for you guys is, what are your thoughts on Tarkin, and if I misspelled his name, I apologize, at this point in the timeline? Not necessarily in the whole franchise, just at this point in the timeline. Where we are right now in Star Wars, between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, what are your thoughts on Tarkin? Please leave your answers in the comment section. Also, feel free to leave your comments and questions in the comment section. I do love to read those. And please like and share this video if you are watching it on Facebook, and like or like and subscribe if you are watching on YouTube. Also, feel free to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, and DivianArt. I do have my name for those four sites right there on the screen, as well as the pictures I use for the icons. Please note, all pictures seen within this video belong to their respected artists. I own absolutely nothing. Okay, quick reminder on my comment rules. Okay, feel free to check out my related videos.
my other TV talk videos on Star Wars. My other TV talk videos. And my other videos. Before I sign off, one thing I'd like to touch on, and that is to please note that there will be dual postings for three of my TV Talk video reviews. My videos on Star Wars, obviously, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and DreamWorks Dragons will be posted both to my Facebook page and my YouTube channel. All other TV Talk videos will be posted strictly to my Facebook page at this point in time. If you'd like to check out any of those videos or the backlog videos of Star Wars, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and or DreamWorks Dragons, you can feel free to check them out on my Facebook page. I will have the link in the description section. As always, thank you for watching, and may the Force be with you.